Hello YouTube, my name is Raymond and in the next couple of videos I just wanted to show you how I remodeled my kitchen. So it took about 26 working days, 26 days working on the project, and it took about 42 calendar days. We took a, the first week off and then we've basically worked on weekends uh, ever since. So this is our kitchen remodel. I'd like to thank my wife, Yvette, my father-in-law, Blaine, and my mother-in-law, Louise, for all the help that they've done with the kitchen remodel. And uh, I hope you enjoy. Please feel free, if you learned something, to hit the like button. And also, if you want to see the other videos in the series or other product reviews or DIY, uh, please feel free to hit the subscribe button and in this video I'm going to show the first three days of the demo project. Hello YouTube. Today is the day we remodel our kitchen. So our plan is to remove the laminate flooring and put luxury vinyl tile in the laundry room as well and also in our pantry. We are also going to remove all the cabinets and countertops. We're going to put um, a peninsula right here where this blue strip of tape is. We're going to add undermount light, uh, cabinet lighting here. Uh, keep, keep an island here. We're also going to move the refrigerator over a little bit and add a 15 inch cabinet over here. Um, so we'll see how it goes. The first thing we did was remove the upper cabinets. Um, with the help of my father-in-law, Blaine, we unscrewed the upper cabinets and we used a stack of books to help with the weight of the cabinets as it came down, and then we brought it all the way down. The next thing that we did was we um, took out the backsplash, so I just removed as many tiles as I could, and then uh, using a putty knife or uh, tried not to damage the wall because I didn't know how much of the wall we would be keeping versus cutting out. Make sure to wear safety glasses and also uh, gloves because the porcelain tile, it chips very easily, could get in your eyes, and then also it um, the chips are like glass, so it could really cut your hands up. All right, and now we're on day two. So yesterday on day one, what we did is we removed all the baseboards from the area. You can, you can scoot up. And we also removed all the upper, you can come on in, upper cabinets and lower cabinets. And some things that we learned is if you are taking out the upper cabinets, come on in, if you're taking out the upper cabinets, it's the better idea is to get a utility knife and score out a little bit so it does not tear. It could be paint or caulk, could tear the drywall. So like this one, for example, it, it did a good job not tearing the drywall here. A few other things we learned is uh, to make sure all your electrical is off and don't assume that just because these two outlets are next to each other that they're on the same circuit. So we've marked them um, based on what circuit they're on. Uh, another useful thing is for the stove here, we tried to take the gas line off the pipe from the actual gas line itself, and that was too difficult, and we think it's actually kind of puttied in. So we thought it was easier to just take the line from the actual stove itself. That turned out to be a lot easier. Um, and then, so for today on day two, we're going to remove the, um, this linoleum and we're going to try to remove this other linoleum so we can get to the subfloor and screw in some of the squeaky spots on the subfloor. And then we're going to remove the rest of this tiling here and feed in the electrical for the, uh, under cabinet lighting. 
Now Blaine is using a 16 pound pry bar to peel off the underlayment. Blaine is using a oscillating multi-tool to carefully remove the drywall um, away from the wall as to not hit any pipes or electrical cords behind it. So today we're starting day three. We didn't do too much. We didn't get a lot of, uh, done on day two. We had two layers of linoleum and two layers of underlayment. So there are probably three or 4,000 staples on the ground that we're gonna have to pry out before we put the uh, luxury vinyl tile down. Uh, the other thing we did was we used a Dremel oscillating tool to round to square out our um, drywall for the backsplash. So now that we have all the electrical exposed, we're going to add some double gang um, outlets here, and we're going to add a, another outlet under the sink for the the water here. And then we're also going to um, just kind of. Uh, add another, um, some other outlets for our um, under cabinet lighting. So for today, for day three, we're going to finish getting some of these staples out of the ground. Um, we've been using the vice grips or pliers or this, um, I think it's called a framing uh, flat iron bar or something like that to get the staples out. So once we get the staples out, we'll start with the flooring and finish the electrical. We had a short sink faucet before, and now we wanted a longer, taller sink faucet. Our windowsill jets out a little too much, so what we did was we just got a hacksaw and cut the windowsill back to allow us to buy a taller sink faucet. This is this flat My wife Yvette is using a different technique and, uh, to get the staples out. She is using a flathead screwdriver to pop the them up a little bit off. and then using vice and grips to, to grip and, and roll the staples out of the We're subfloor. Getting the staples off because we think that if we don't and just try to hammer them into the subfloor that the staples could pop up and start squeaking. The floors could start squeaking so that's why we're removing the staples. It's always a good idea to take pictures of what's behind your wall before you put the drywall up. It's hard to do it right on the line. I was just practicing. Yeah, just make sure not to punch a go so far in that you punch a hole through the the foyer wall. It's a good idea to label the wires inside a junction box. For example, a switch has a line or a hot going into the box and then a load going to the light fixture. And also outlets have lines or hots going in and loads uh, going out to other junction boxes.